Um, I can't really remember. It's it's always been with me because I've always. Uh, I probably know as much about film as I do about music. I've always been a great fan of cinema, so um, it's. I think my earliest memory of it is um, when I saw the. I think it was the second Pink Floyd album was a film soundtrack for an obscure French film called Moor. Yeah. I think. Um, I've never seen it though. But I remember seeing the sleeve and thinking, you know, I was probably like 14 or 15 and thinking, wow, bands can make music for soundtracks. And it kind of stuck with me and it was something that I'd always, always wanted to do. But when you're in a band, you only really get offered to do like the title music song or to be in the movie playing in a nightclub, something like that. No one actually thinks of like asking you to write the entire score. So it wasn't until um, 1989 when I got my first opportunity to work with, like you said before, when Nigel Wingrove with the uh, Visions of Ecstasy, and that was a, that was a nice introduction because it was only 18 minutes long, you know, and there was no dialogue whatsoever. So it was like doing a, a very long form video. Mm -hmm. And it was a great introduction. It was a nice and smooth introduction for me to try and understand how, you know, the dynamics of music work with with picture as opposed to just writing songs, etc. Right. I would do if there was the budget there, if it was possible to, uh, if it was economic to do it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not. Um, so I don't even think of that. I w what I would do if I was given the opportunity would be uh, to maybe h hire in a string section and then rework some of it to work live mm -hmm. like that. So I like to be very flexible and very mobile so I can go off to places like Mexico City mm -hmm. on my own, make it work, and therefore more people get to see it. The, the music has to be subservient to the image and the, the director's vision of the story. It shouldn't get in the way, it shouldn't you know, suddenly pop out and say, look how clever this music is. It's always got to be somewhere just like, uh, you know, like a little bed underneath the movie, just ma making sure certain, certain moments push out, but never beyond what you're at. Because when you're watching a movie, you're processing a lot of different things in your brain at the time. You're, you're looking at the, you know, the, if you're looking at a person especially, you're, you're registering everything on their face all at once and the emotion and what's going on in the story. It's, it's a very fast uh, reaction. So the music should, should just be another element. Right, without being intrusive. Without being intrusive. So um, I, I can try and eliminate my, my ego from the music, but I can't eliminate my interpretation of right. what I think the movie is trying to say. Because I can't, you know, it's 80 years on. I don't have the chance to sit down with Jean Cocteau and say, "What did you mean there?" You know. So it's my interpretation, and I've chosen what parts to highlight and what parts to just like sit back and wait for those elements to happen. Okay. They're all pretty much the same in one respect, is that you have to have a relationship with, with, with anybody you work with in a way that most of what you do can be pretty unspoken. You, you just get the feeling of what is required and hopefully you can make that happen. But that, all I want to do is, is work on independent films because I have, more often than not, a direct contact with the director 
and he calls the shots. Mm -hmm. There's no producer saying, oh, that's too dark, that's too sad, or whatever. Right. You know. So you're just dealing one on one with the director. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, well, my wife is half Mexican, so oh, I, 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 I know plenty about the, uh, the culture. Um, the second day I was here, I, I had a bit of time, so I went to see Frida Kahlo's house, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Uh, I went to the Museum of Anthropology yesterday and hopefully have a little walk around tomorrow before I, uh, and Wednesday before I leave on Wednesday. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very fond of Mexico City and Mexico in general. No. So, well, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank and, you. Uh, for, for being part of this interview. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, congratulations for your concert. And, uh, well, we hope to have you back here in Mexico. Yeah, it's all looking promising that I will uh, continue the collaboration with and come back. I hope so. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.